Welcome to the next part of our Structural Fire Engineering course here at Stellenbosch University. We're now going to be looking at timber structures. And some years ago, if people told you that they were going to build a 10-story building out of timber, you probably think they were crazy and that the risk would be too much. But these days, that's a reality. We've got high-rise, solid timber structures going up all over the world. And with the drive for environmentally friendly, sustainable construction, timber is being used more and more. And we can produce large columns and beams and floor slabs and walling systems from timber. And it's really growing in popularity. But we have to think about fire design quite carefully. We can produce fire safe timber structures, but we do need to know what we're doing and have to think a bit more broadly. Now, in front of myself, I've got a simple timber section that's just been tested a bit. I've colored it in just to exaggerate the, the layers so you can see, but if I've got a, a timber section, what's going to happen is charring, and charring is very important when it comes to design, because as it's exposed to fire, I will have a charring front that starts penetrating into the section. And if we've tested the species, we can know more or less what that charring rate is, somewhere between 0.6 and 0.9 millimeters per minute. And even under different severities, that is more or less the same charring rate. And then ahead of the charring front, we've got a, a layer of pyrolysis occurring. And if we know what's happening in there, you can see that I've got a residual section. And that residual section I can then use to get a, a a, a reliable capacity, something that I know that that's how much is left of my beam or my column, but at least that's enough. That is sufficient to carry the fire limit state load. Because as we've discussed previously in this course, a fire limit state load combination is often a lot less severe than the maximum load in 50 years. So with charring rates, with behavior, I can come to a timber section that is then efficient and well, designable. But there are a couple of other considerations we need to look at. Firstly, then connections. How do we actually join our timber structure together? Because connections are very important. And in any real building, connections are normally where failure occurs. So how would we go about connecting our different sections together? And then furthermore, with recent research being done, how does our timber structure influence the fire loads? Because in ish, if I just had a steel building or a concrete building and the same mat material inside, identical building but made out of timber, now our skeleton of the structure is actually contributing to the fire load and our walls might be a source of fuel. So in real rational fire design, we may need to have to, to consider what is our fire load and how has it changed, and then looking at what would be the building response or the wall response or the different item response under possibly an increased fire load. That's beyond the scope of what we're going to be carrying covering in this course, but just to be aware of it that in behavior of timber structures, we need to consider these various different aspects. And so with that, let's start getting into the design of timber elements for fire.